Hello there, Mr. Sutton with the BC Calculus 7.3 Extra Practice Number 1 Solutions on Transformations of Maclaurin Series. For this problem, we're trying to figure out the expansion for sine of 2x. So the easiest way to do this one is just to start with the Maclaurin Series for sine of x and plug 2x into it. So sine of x, we've got x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial and so on and so forth. Now to get sine of 2x, we just plug 2x in for all the x's. So this x is now a 2x. This x is now a 2x. So this is 2x quantity cubed over 3 factorial. And we're subtracting that. And then we've got plus 2x quantity to the fifth over 5 factorial. Looking at my answer choices, the only ones that even start with 2x are choices b and e. And we need to do minus 2x cubed over 3 factorial. That's going to be choice b right away. Um, so there's our answer. On this problem, they're asking us where the graph of the function represented by this Maclaurin series intersects the graph of y equals x cubed. So one way to do this is you could just write out a bunch of these series because you can see the pattern here and intersect it with y equals x cubed and, and hope you've written out enough of these to get an answer close enough to one of these answer choices. Or another way you could do it is figure out exactly which function this represents, which is what I'm about to do. Um, so I'm going to rewrite this slightly. I'm going to call this 1 plus negative x plus negative x squared over 2 factorial, and so on and so forth, all the way to, I'm going to combine these, uh, negative x to the n over n factorial. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm recognizing that there's a pattern here. We've got 1 plus something plus something squared over 2 factorial, plus something to the n over n factorial. That's an e to the x kind of pattern. e to the x has this same kind of pattern, except it has x instead of negative x. So that means that this must represent the function e to the negative x. At this point, once I've got this exact function, all I have to do is set e to the negative x and x cubed equal to each other and solve that on my calculator. So let me do that now. So I've got both of these plugged in my y equals. For my window, looking at my answer choices, I have answer choices ranging between 0 and 2, I would say. So let me make that my window. And I can always adjust it later if I need to, but this should be a good starting point. Let me do zoom 0 now, zoom fit, just to see approximately where these things are with respect to each other. Um, so there is the e to the negative x decaying function. There's our cubic polynomial. We clearly cross at this spot right here. So let me do second, and then trace, and then option five, intersect, and then just press enter one, two, three times to get an intersection of 0.773. So there's my graph. My intersection at 0.773 matches up with answer choice A. On this problem, we're trying to get the power series expansion of e to the x minus e to the negative x over two. So the quickest way to do this one without having to take a bunch of derivatives is to just use the Maclaurin series for e to the x and transform that to form one of these series down here. So let's start with e to the x, which is going to be 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. And we could keep going here. And we'll go just one more, x to the fourth over 4 factorial. And now let's do the one for e to the negative x, um, both because we need that for this larger piece and because we already have e to the x. Let's get this, this counterpart here. So e to the negative x, that's going to be 1. And now we're going to substitute negative x for all the x's. So this is minus x. Uh, the minus doesn't affect anything if you're squaring it. So this is just going to be plus x squared over 2 factorial again. But negative x cubed gives us a negative out here. And then negative x to the fourth is still positive, so positive x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Next, we need to add these two series together. So this is e to the x plus e to the negative x. And to do that, we're just going to combine like terms until we get sick of combining terms. So we have a 1 and a 1. That adds up to 2. x and negative x cancels out. x squared and over 2 factorial and itself, that's going to be 2x squared over 2 factorial. And I'm actually just going to leave it like that because I'm about to go ahead and divide everything by 2 anyway. Um, so I might as well just keep that around. 
And now we've got these x cubeds canceling out. We have a 2 x to the fourth over 4 factorial. And we could keep going. There, there's a pattern here that we're definitely uh, able to pick up on if we wanted to. So now I just have to divide all of this by 2. So go ahead and divide by 2. We've got 2 divided by 2, which is 1. This term divided by 2, that just cancels out the 2 in the numerator. So that's just plus x squared over 2 factorial. Same thing over here. Now we just have x to the fourth over 4 factorial. And we could keep going. But this is definitely enough to match the answer choice A. For this problem, I want to know the sum of this series. Now, this is a little bit tricky because normally when we ask for the sum of a series, it's a geometric series. And you can just use your infinite sum formula. But this one is not quite geometric. I mean, we keep having these multiples of 2, powers of 2 in the numerator. Um, but this denominator, all these different factorials, that kind of breaks the geometric pattern. So we need something else. So I'd like to call your attention to the general pattern here. We have 1 plus something to the first over 1 factorial plus something to the second over 2 factorial plus something to the third over 3 factorial plus something to the n over n factorial. Well, if you have that general pattern here, something with, with the same power and factorial, and we have all addition, this is actually the expansion for e to the x, which means all of this stuff is essentially just e to the x, but instead of x, the something is 2. So this is really all just e squared. And that happens to be an answer choice, answer choice b. On this no calculator problem, we have f as a function such that f prime is sine of x squared, about 0. We want the first three non-zero terms of a Maclaurin series for f. All right. Well, eventually, if we want f, we're going to have to take the antiderivative of f prime. But we need to first figure out what f prime looks like as a series. So let's start with the Maclaurin series for just sine of x. That's going to be x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial, and we could keep going, but these all only have three terms, so I'm not going further than three terms out on this. Next, we need to do sine of x squared. Well, that's just going to be all of this stuff, but with x squared plugged in for x. So we've got an x squared instead of an x right away, and then uh, this is x squared cubed, so x to the sixth over 3 factorial that we're subtracting. Next, we have plus x to the tenth over 5 factorial, and at this point, uh, this is f prime right here. So we need to take the integral of this thing from 0 to x in order to get the, the function that they're looking for, the f function. But now when you do this, taking these antiderivatives, you're going to notice you have all x terms, which means when you plug in this lower limit of integration in your evaluation box, everything's just going to zero out anyway. Um, so really, you're just going to be stuck with whatever you plugged in from your upper limit of integration, which is basically just the antiderivative of all this with x plugged in instead of t. All right, so doing that then, antiderivative, we've got, this is going to be x to the third over 3, minus, this is going to be x to the seventh over whatever 7 times 3 factorial is. And then this one's going to be x to the 11th over 11 times 5 factorial. Looking at the answer choices, do we have this in any of the answer choices? Kind of, sort of. Um, we can definitely narrow it down to choices C and D, but it looks like they actually simplified their denominators for some reason. Um, so we're going to have to go ahead and follow suit. So we definitely have x cubed over 3 minus, and now 7 times 3 factorial, that's 7 times 6, which is 42. And that's actually enough to cho choose choice D. Um, but if you wanted to do the next one just for fun, this is really 11 times 120. Well, that's really like having a 10 times 120 plus 1 times 120. That's going to be, let's see here, 1,200 plus 120, which is 1,320. So x to the 11th over 1,320. Again, totally unnecessary, just for fun. You could have picked choice D after the first two terms. For this problem, we have this series uh, negative 1 to the n, x to the n, n factorial. And they're saying it's the Taylor series about 0 for which of these functions. So it's basically the, the opposite of when you start with one of these and you have to expand it. 
Um, we have to turn this into one of these functions. So just to get my bearings, I'm going to actually start plugging in n values and see what this thing looks like. So plugging in 0, we've just got all of the numerator to the 0 over uh, 0 factorial, which is that's just going to be 1 over 1, which is all just 1. Next, I'm going to plug in 1 for n. So that's going to be negative x over 1 factorial, so just negative x. Plugging in 2 now for n, that's going to be positive 1, x to the second over 2 factorial. And we're just going to keep going. We're just going to keep alternating between positive and negative. And our exponent and our factorial are going to keep matching up. So if you rewrite this a little bit differently, if I write this as 1 plus negative x, plus negative x squared over 2 factorial, plus, in general, negative x to the n over n factorial, which is what you could simplify this to if you move the negative 1 and the x in together, since they have the same exponent. If you do all this, there's a pattern. We have 1 plus something, plus something squared over 2 factorial, plus something to the n over n factorial. That's the pattern of e to the x. Only instead of x, we have a negative x here. Um, so this really, then, is just going to be e to the negative x. And you could always expand that back out to make sure it matches up, but it does. So this is answer choice d. On this problem, we're trying to expand sine of t over t. Well, let's start with the expansion of just sine of t. We should have that memorized. That's going to be t minus uh, t cubed over 3 factorial plus t to the fifth over 5 factorial and we'll do one more, minus t to the 7th over 7 factorial. Probably don't need to go further than that. So now we're just going to do sine of t over t, which is just going to divide each of these terms by t. So t over itself is just 1. Next, we have minus t squared over 3 factorial, plus t to the 4th over 5 factorial, minus t to the 6th over 7 factorial. And this is going to allow us to pick which answer choice. Uh, let's see here. It looks like A is still in the running. And I think everything else uh, gets eliminated here. So it's going to be choice A. On this problem, we have a function f satisfying this f prime equation, where the derivative is just the original function plus x plus 1. They're telling us f of 0 is 2. And they're also telling us that there's a Taylor series for f about x equals 0 that converges to f of x for all x. Awesome. First part, they just want an equation of the line tangent to f of x at the point where x equals 0. Um, so I'm going to use my general tangent line formula. L of x equals uh, f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So in this case, instead of a, our launching off point is 0. So I'm going to write that L of x equals f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x minus 0. I already know what f of 0 is. They told me. It's 2. But I still need f prime of 0 in order to make sense of this. So let me plug 0 into my f prime formula up here. Um, so that's going to be f of 0 plus 0 plus 1. f of 0, well, yeah, they told me that. It's 2. So this is 2 plus 0 plus 1, which is 3. Going back here, f of 0 for the third time is 2 f prime of 0, we just figured out, is 3. So we're adding that. And then x minus 0 is just x. So this is just 3x. And there's our tangent line equation. For this next part of the problem, they want us to figure out f double prime of 0 and then the second degree Taylor polynomial for f about 0. All right. So for this one, I need to take the derivative of the derivative. So I need f prime prime here of x. That's going to be equal to just f prime of x plus 1, and this other one gets zeroed out. So f prime of x plus 1. So let me actually go ahead and plug 0 into this thing. So that's going to be f prime of 0 plus 1. What's f prime of 0? Well, we found that in part a. It was 3. So this is really 3 plus 1, which comes out, of course, to 4. We're going to use this now to find the second degree Taylor polynomial. So p sub 2, I'm going to write. That's going to be f of 0. And this is just using your general Taylor formula. Uh, f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus f double prime of 0 over 2 factorial times x squared. And I'm just plugging in for all these different function and derivative values. f of 0, we said, was 2. 
f prime of 0 is 3, so this is 3x we're adding. And you might notice this is actually just the linear approximation here, the linear formula. Um, so now to get the quadratic polynomial, we have f double prime of 0, which we just figured out was 4. That's going to be divided by 2, and we've got an x squared to go along with all that. If you wanted to, you could simplify this to 2 plus 3x to 2x squared. For this problem part, now they want the fourth degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 0. Well, here was the uh, first two degrees, constant, linear, and quadratic. And I'm just using the simplified version of what we had before. But to this, we're going to add two more terms. Now we want, for the third term, the third order, we have f triple prime of 0 times x cubed over 3 factorial. And they wanted fourth degree, so we also need plus the fourth derivative of 0, x to the fourth over 4 factorial. So let's go ahead and find that third derivative. Now remember, the second derivative was just f prime of x plus 1. So the, second, uh, the, the third derivative, rather, is going to be f double prime of x, and then that 1 is getting zeroed out. Um, so the third derivative really is just the second derivative because of that zeroing out action of constants. Plugging 0 in there, well, what was f double prime of 0? That was just 4. So f triple prime of 0 is also going to be 4. And now the fourth derivative is just the same as the third derivative if you take the derivative of both sides of this equation here. And wait, what was the third derivative at 0? Well, it was 4. So that's also the fourth derivative. And we could just keep going on this. Um, but at this point in the problem, we just need to plug in those 4s for our derivatives here. Um, so this is going to be 4x cubed over 3 factorial and 4x to the 4th over 4 factorial, a whole bunch of 4s. We actually are done at this point on this part. Um, but if you wanted to simplify it, you've got all that stuff in the beginning. And then this is going to be 4 over 6, which reduces to 2 thirds x cubed. And then we've got 4 canceling out with the 4 and the 4 factorial. So this is just going to be x to the 4th over 6. Or you could think of this as 4 over 24, which again is 1 over uh, 6. So that's the simplified version of this. On this last part of the problem, they want us to find the nth derivative of 0, uh, just for n greater than or equal to 2. And there's some other stuff they want us to do, but let's do this first. Um, so in general, you saw on the last part of the problem here, when we were doing third derivative and fourth derivative, that after you get to the third derivative, each derivative is just going to be equal to the derivative before it. So in general, we can say that the nth derivative, for n greater than or equal to 2, the nth derivative is just going to be the n minus first derivative at 0. And all of these we saw just came out to 4. OK, so next, using this, uh, they want us to use the Taylor series about f at x equals 0 and the Taylor series about e to the x to find a polynomial expression for f of x minus 4e to the x. So the key here is they said use the Taylor series for f about x equals 0. They didn't say the Taylor polynomial. They said the Taylor series. That means they want the whole thing, including the general term. So here was the first four terms of our series. And I unsimplified this piece a little bit to be 4 over 2 instead of 2x squared. You'll see why I did that later. But we need, we need a general term now. Well, since our general term is just going to be the nth derivative of 0 times x to the n over n factorial, and the nth derivative is just 4, our general term is just going to be 4 x to the n over n factorial. So that's f of x in its full expansion. Now we're going to need to figure out the expansion for e to the x. And then we'll do 4e to the x and subtract it. Um, so e to the x, that's going to be, that's one of those memorized ones. That's going to be 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial, all the way out to our general term of x to the n over n factorial. But we're not done. We need to rewrite this as 4e to the x. So I'm just going to multiply all this series by 4. That's going to be 4 plus 4x plus 4x squared over 2, which, that's curious, that matches up there, plus 4x cubed over 3 factorial. Hmm, that also matches. And if we go out to the general term, multiplying this just gives us 
x to the n over n factorial. Now, at long last, we get to put everything together and do f of x minus 4e to the x. So we're essentially going to take f term by term and subtract 4e to the x. So just combining like terms, 2 minus 4 is negative 2. 3x minus 4x is negative x. And you might be wondering, how many terms do we need to show? Because they actually didn't say it. They just said polynomial expression. So that's kind of vague, because this thing could theoretically go forever. Uh, but let's, let's keep going. We have 4 over 2x squared minus 4 over 2x squared. Well, those are exactly the same, so those cancel. 4 over 3 factorial x cubed minus itself also cancels. And if we keep going, we see that every term out to this general term is now identical so that when we subtract them, all of the other terms after this minus x are going to cancel out. So it turns out negative 2 minus x, I mean, it's not much, but it does count as a polynomial expression.